mine. Brought to you by Kellogg's, the folks who bring the best to you each morning, the widest choice of cereals in the forms you like best. Yours from Kellogg's of Battle Creek. Now let's all play What's My Line? And now let's meet our award-winning panel of What's My Line? First, the delightful star of stage and television, whose book, That Certain Something, has just made the bestseller list, Miss Arlene Francis. And now, one of the most brilliant and facile of the new young comedians who is soon to appear in the picture, Ocean's Eleven, Mr. Joey Bishop. It's my pleasure to introduce the voice of Broadway and a very beautiful voice, Ms. Dorothy Kilgallen. Uh, my daughter is joining the publishing business tomorrow morning, and I'd like you to meet her new boss, Bennett Sir. <laughs> Will you forgive me for one minute while I go over and zip Arlene? Oh, it's the nicest thing that ever happened. <laughs> and here's our superb panel moderator, young John Charles Daly. I think it's only fair to share with you all the fact that we're in a new theater after all these long years tonight. Any mistakes that are made will be my fault. <clears throat> nice to have you with us, Mr. Bishop. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to What's My Line. We'll be up to our usual tricks, trying to give the panel as difficult a half hour as we can. We will also have a famous mystery guest a little bit later in the show, and we'll meet our first challenger after this. And now let's meet our first contestant. Will you come in and sign in, please? Carol? Bonavit, right? <laughs> Is it Miss or Mrs.? Miss. Miss? I should have guessed that. Where are you from, Miss Bonavit? West Orange, New Jersey. West Orange, New Jersey. That makes you practically a neighbor, so I think that our friends in the panel will be familiar. May I present them? Yes. Miss Bonavit, will you join me over here now, please? You know how we keep score, Miss Bonnevin? Yes, I do. All right, then let's let the audience and the theater and the folks who are watching at home know exactly what your line is. <laughs> now, panel, I do think it's fair to tell you that uh, Miss Bonnevin is still a student, but she does her work after school hours during the school year and on weekends and works at it very hard all summer long. We'll tell you that uh, Miss Bonavid is salaried and that she deals in a service and we'll begin the general questioning with Bennett Cerf. Miss Bonavid, you know, you're awfully young to be risking yourself next to Mr. Daly. <laughs> There's no risk here at all. <laughs> uh, does the service that you perform, Miss Bonavid, mean coming into contact with people? Definitely. Do you come into contact with both sexes, men and women? Yes. They come to where you perform your service? That's right. Do you perform your service in an enclosure of any kind? Yes. Is it a walled-in and roofed-in enclosure? Yes, it is. Could it be a store of some kind? No, wait, let, let's have a small conversation. You're asking here in terms of, uh, is it specifically a store of some kind? Is that right? A store or department store or oh. drive-in. Well, fine. Thanks very much for the clarification. That's one down and nine to go. Ms. Francis. Ms. Bonavit, do you advise or help these people in some way that come to you? Yes. Uh, do you give them information of some kind? Yes. Do you point out anything to them? such as uh, the different places or things to see in the building in which you are uh, 
No. No, I don't think <laughs> All so. All right. No. I'd like to add something, but I can't. I'd give too much away. That's two down and eight to go, Mr. Bishop. Well, uh, this is my first time playing the game. You're obviously not a price fighter. <laughs> <laughs> Is this service you perform um, uh, paid by the people, or are you already paid? No, Miss Bonavit receives a salary for her services, and we can assume that the people who avail themselves of the services in turn uh, pay some emolument to her employer. Yes. Uh, well, I, well, let me uh, say it this way. Do you, uh, or would you receive gratuities for the service? you perform? No. That's uh, three down and seven to go, Miss Kilgallen. Uh, could children avail themselves of your services? Yes. Uh, do your services have anything to do with travel? No. Four down and six to go, Mr. Sir. Miss Bonaviat, have your services got anything to do even remotely with the entertainment business? No. No, I don't think so, Bennett. Five down and five to go. I'm sure that, for instance, if you were to avail yourself of, of uh, Miss Bonavit's services, you would not consider it a part of the entertainment business. <laughs> five down and five to go, Miss Francis. Miss Bonavit, is there anything to do with a game or a sport yes. in what you do? Do you instruct the people in something, then, that has to do with uh, a form of exercise or sport? Yes. Uh, is there any water involved? No. Might need it afterwards, but not at the time. <laughs> Six down and four to go, Mr. Bishop. Is there dry land involved? <laughs> <laughs> You're on terra firma. Yes. Um, is this a, a seasonal job that you perform? No. That's seven down and three to go, Miss Kilgallen. Oh, golly. Uh, is there sporting equipment involved? Yes. Is there a ball involved? No. That's eight down and two to go, and I wouldn't want you, you to be misled in the, in the large term of sporting equipment, which could be dress or, or any contrivance of one kind or another. There is, but uh, don't be misled in, in terms of, of uh, specifics in this area. Is that all right with you? Sorry. Since I've said it, there's not much we can do about it, is there? All right, Mr. Sir? Miss Bonaviat, for the purpose of performing the sport in which you indulge, do you attach anything to your shoes? Like no. laces, you mean? No, like skates. Oh, <laughs> skates. No, that's nine down and one to go, Miss Francis. Do the people touch you when you are performing this service? Yes. You are in rather close contact with them in, this, uh, in the service? Uh, yes. that you, mm -hmm. uh, w would it even remotely have to do not with prize fighting, but with jujitsu or... <laughs> In other words, you could throw somebody if you wanted to. Yes. And they could throw you. Yes. Am I? <laughs> well, you mean it's something other than jujitsu, huh? Mm-hmm. Um, what is that Can other thing? judo. Judo? Is That's it right. judo? Yeah. Very good, Miss Aunt. Miss Bonavit, this lovely, charming, slight young lady, is employed by the Judo Institute of New Jersey as an instructor. <laughs> Would you go and entertain Bennett and fling him right out there? <laughs> well, I must say, we are very pleased to have had you with us. You've been Thanks a wonderful guest and lots of fun. <laughs> no, fun isn't the word, is it? Well, pleasure with your judo. I'm sure Thank you do you have a lot. Much. Nice to have had you with us. Bye-bye. <laughs> Could you say good night to the family? Well, I thought we were going to stick the panel with that one. We came close to it, but we didn't quite make it. Let's see what we can do with another challenge. Will you enter and sign in, please? Thomas? Thomas Hull, right there.
Where are you from, Mr. Hull? Lake Ronkonkoma, New York. Lake where? Lake Ronkonkoma, New York. You said it twice. Try it a third time. Lake Ronkonkoma, New York. Congratulations. Your medal will be here next week. That's very good. <laughs> Lake Ronkonkoma. May I present our panel, Mr. Hull? Panel. Will you join me over here, please, sir? Do you know how we keep score? In that event, we'll let the folks here in the theater and those at home know exactly what your line is. Panel, Mr. Hull, we will tell you, is salaried and deals in a product. And let's begin the general questioning with Arlene Francis. Mr. Hull, is it a product that I might use? Certainly. Uh, if I had one, would I let Joey use it sometimes? You might. Is it something that I might hold in my hand? Yes. Is it, uh, does it have any moving parts? No. One down and nine to go, Mr. Bishop. Is it something that I would let uh, Arlene <laughs> use if, if I had it? I think so. You're wrong, sir. <laughs> That's right, I'm pretty selfish. <laughs> Is this uh, found in the home? Yes. <clears throat> Is it found in one particular room of no. the home? That's two down and eight to go, Miss Kilgallen. Uh, does this product, uh, could it be found outside too, Mr. Hull? Oh, yes. Uh, would that be normal? Yes. Uh, is this product alive, or has it ever been? No. No. Three down and seven to go, Mr. Sir. Mr. Hull, does this product perform a useful service? Yes. <laughs> uh, We'd like to think so, Bennett, anyway. Uh, can pe are people better off after they've used the product? Sometimes. Uh, is this product consumed in any no. way? That makes it four down and six to go, Miss Francis. Now, I will say here, again, not to mislead you, we have used the word consumed with reference to products rather specifically. Uh, almost any product will in time wear out. And to that degree, this product can be described as, as consumed, as, as uh, clothing wears out, automobiles wear out, etc. Okay? That's right. Four down and six to go, Miss Francis. Uh, does this product come in different shapes and sizes? No. That makes it five down and five to go, Mr. Bishop. I want you to realize, sir, that your appearance here is costing me another appearance I might have had on this show. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just dying to ask you, what do you do for a living? <laughs> Um, has it something to do uh, with ground? I, I mean in the form of, uh, of planting. No. Oh, planted. No, that's six down and four to go, Miss Kilgallen. Mr. Hull, is it solid rather than liquid? It's a solid. Uh, is it solidly made? No, I'm going to withdraw that. Excuse me. You said I could hold it in my hand. If I held it in my hand, would I use it on something or somebody? <laughs> you mean here in terms of using it on? If she were real angry. Well, if I, I mean, in, in, in order to perform its normal use, would I have to move my arm? Yes. <laughs> Would I apply this to something or someone? Yeah. Apply it, you mean stick it to? Or tap it? Tap or it. touch something with it? Or touch something with it? I mean, I wouldn't just wave it around like a bat. <laughs> I would. It's been, it's been waved around in its day. <laughs> But I think the word apply there, Dorothy, we have to throw you because of it course. would mislead you if we let the yes go. That's seven down and three to go, Mr. Sir. Mr. Hull, would this, in any, would this object ever be used by some public service corporation or the military? Yes. It would. Would it be used by, uh, more by public service corporation than by the army? <laughs> Not necessarily. <laughs> Would it be used more by public service corporations? 
<laughs> you got a flat no on it. I just thought of something. That is, that's eight times two to go, Miss Francis. Is there anything about this product that is dangerous or could be used for dangerous in a dangerous way? <laughs> I think yeah, I certainly would agree with that. And it has no moving parts. <laughs> <laughs> but it wouldn't be called an implement. Yes, it would not be called an implement, no. Uh -huh. Would it be used or carried on special occasions? Well, I would say if a special occasion arose, you would certainly have some concern that you did carry it on that special occasion because the occasion <laughs> might depend on it, you know? Thanks a lot. <laughs> Is it anything that helps to get rid of anything else? Yes, it has on occasions been used to get rid of other things. Could we have a conference for a minute? Yes, you may have 30 seconds for a conference. Is it explosive like gunpowder or dynamite well, or anything like that? It has no moving parts and can be used to get uh, and yet rid of dangerous. something else. It and it's dangerous. So far, I've got mother-in-law. <laughs> kind of Hasn't problem. your mother-in-law got any moving parts? <laughs> Not my mother-in-law. <laughs> And if she hasn't any moving parts, Joey, why do you want to get rid of her? Mother-in-law is supposed to talk all the time. You have to apply that to use it. Is this something that would be used in the police force? Yes. It would? Yeah. If it's a whistle. Two tickets for a ball. <laughs> it doesn't make any sound, does it? It has been described as making a sound. I think since you put it that specifically, it's now nine down and one to go, Mr. Bishop. You lucky son of a gun, you're going to win $50. <laughs> <laughs> throw in the towel. That's all right. I just tossed in the towel. This is going to kill you all. Mr. Hull burns money. Oh. He is the supervisor for currency destru destruction with the uh, New York City Federal Reserve Bank. And he had a tough job. Every day he burns a million and a half dollars in old, tired ones, fives, Where are the ashes? I'd like to go over there. <laughs> but I do want to give you one solace. This money is no longer fit for circulation. It isn't it lost. Fit. It gets replaced somewhere along the line. Thank you, sir. That was a lot of Thank fun. You. It was nice Thank to have you, you with us. <laughs> We'll meet tonight's mystery guest in just a moment, but first, here is a word from our sponsor. And now we come to the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery celebrity, for which my colleagues on the panel are all blindfolded, as you know. The blindfolds in place, panel? Yes. Sir. Will you come in, mystery challenger, and sign in, please? In the case of our mystery challenger, we go to a different form of questioning. Actually, Joey, this is something I think that you might need to be reminded of. This is a different form of questioning. You ask one question at a time, in turn moving clockwise, and we'll begin it with um, Dorothy Kilgallen. Uh, if any of us on the panel were a disc jockey, would he or she be likely to play a record of yours? No. One down and nine to go, Mr. <laughs> Sir. Have you got anything whatever to do with motion pictures? Yeah. Miss Francis? Well, the reception you got is usually a, a reception reserved for teenage idols. <laughs> Do 
Does that mean, yes, you are a teenage idol? Well, an old one. An old one. <laughs> I never worn this type of mask before. I just like to say that Tonto was a fink. <laughs> I, I take it from your voice, you are a male. Is, is that correct? Yeah. And you are a most... Oh, I only get one, right? That's all, but that's very valuable, because sometimes you get fooled, Joey. Okay. So all right, thank you. Ms. Gilgallon. Uh, are you known... No, I won't say that. Uh, are you in a picture that is currently playing in the first-run houses or in a first-run house in New York? No. That's two down and eight to go, Mr. Sir. Do you ever produce murder and mystery pictures? No. Three down and seven to go, Miss Francis. Are you about to be in a picture that is uh, to be released here in New York? About to be seen in a picture to be released? Yeah. Mr. Bishop? Good, then we won't have to resort to the late, late shows. <laughs> is it uh, for a dramatic part as compared to a... Uh, a musical part in the picture? Yeah. Miss Kilgallen? Uh, since you would not accept uh, Arlene's teenage idol compliment, uh, would you describe yourself as a character man? <laughs> no. Four down and six to go, Mr. Sir. Are you possibly one of the stars in the apartment? No. Five down and five to go, Miss Francis. That teenage idol bit. He's not a teenage idol. No, but they screamed about it. Were you, were, <laughs> I was a teenage idol. Were you a, were you a teenage idol not too long ago? How long is long ago? <laughs> Five years ago, were they screaming in the theaters when you appeared or something well, around that? I would say here, Arlene, it's very hard to be exact in terms of years, but that our guest has uh, been no. in the entertainment world for quite a few years, and in his earlier years and in the middle years would, could be described as a teenage idol, as you can to some measure so describe him now. You could, huh? Yeah. <laughs> well, then it's not Harold Lloyd. It's you, Joey. No, it's not Harold Lloyd. That's six down and four to go, Mr. Bishop. I'm sorry, I dozed off there for a minute. <laughs> Were you, uh, and I, I hope you won't misconstrue the question. Were you at one time a star who is now doing character parts? No. At seven down and three to go, Miss Kilgallen. Uh, in other words, when you play in a movie which has a romance, you get the girl? Yeah. Mr. Sir? <clears throat> Have you been on the Broadway stage within the last three years? No. Eight down and two to go, Miss Francis? Um... I'm dying. <laughs> Are you, um... Have you made this picture in Europe? This yeah. one that is about to be released. Mr. Bishop? Yeah. Well, he, uh, he hasn't done a, a picture, and uh, he hasn't done a hit record, and he hasn't been on a Broadway show. You, you Joey, better get another... Time, no, 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 Joey. Joey, this time, no towel. The bell saved you. I've run out of time, so we have to flip the rest. You may remove your masks and meet Van Johnson. We're lucky to have him here. I might say the Eastern Seaboard is lucky because if I read my papers correctly, you're going to do some summer stock in, in uh, yes, Rhode Island. Yes, we have the damn Yankees at uh, Warwick, Rhode Island. Ah, oh, wonderful. And then in, uh, uh, where am I going? Wallingford, Wallingford, Connecticut. Oh, good. Damn good. Yankees. And, and you look just exactly the same as you did when they were screaming oh. in the... <laughs> <laughs> Dan, thank you very much. Good to see you. We'll be back after this word from our alternate sponsor. 
Joey, it's been fun having you with us, and I hope, for one, that your prediction doesn't come true and you come back soon. Good night, Miss Arlene Francis. Good night, John. Good luck in Philadelphia, Joey. Thank you very much. Good night, Dorothy. Good night, Joey. Come again. Good night, Bennett. Good luck to you everywhere, John. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> This new theater has got him bugged. <laughs> Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for being with us on What's My Line? <laughs> What's My Line is a CBS television network production in association with Mark Goodson and Bill Todman. <laughs>